Hi folks and happy 2019. It's been a few months since I've had an opportunity to uh, work in the shop. A couple things I was working on, I left off on that AM transmitter circuit before I get back to another uh, vintage radio repair or restore. I was playing around with some different oscillator circuits and uh, here's another one It's just a class A circuit. Um, instead of using my uh, 2N3904, I had a few uh, BC, 547C, as in Charlie, transistors. A little more gain, so I wanted to play around with that. This particular uh, design right here, based on the inductor itself, will uh, tune the entire AM broadcast band. However, you can see that I've got a couple capacitors here in parallel with the inductor. And I've got this tuned in a way basically to uh, kind of get toward the center or the upper end of the broadcast band uh, just by design instead of using a uh, precision uh, variable capacitor or condenser here. The uh, voltage peak to peak is about uh, 10 volts so it's got a nice uh, clean sine wave here that I'll show in a picture in picture. Uh, that you can see for yourself based on a 9-volt uh, uh, battery. Of course, the uh, regulated power supply for any oscillator is extremely important. Any variations in the uh, DC voltage will cause uh, drift or chirp. So if you're looking to use this for something other than, uh, you know, just for fun, for playing some music, through an old uh, vintage radio, then uh, you'd really want to clean this uh, DC supply up and make some other changes. Uh, you can see here my uh, audio input here uh, works at about a half a volt input uh, to get the correct modulation. You can vary that on your uh, device that you're driving this from. Goes straight into the uh, base. It's uh, pretty straightforward. Let me uh, throw up the parts list for you real quick and then we'll take a look at the circuit board itself and the layout. Alright, here's the uh, parts list that I just referenced here. The uh, BC547C is the only uh, semiconductor used and then you can see I've got the uh, various capacitors here called out as well. The uh, 12 to 60 picofarad ceramic capacitor. Again, you could substitute that along with C2 and uh, just put a single you know, tuning capacitor in if you would elect to do so, somewhere between 10 and 365, and that will tune almost uh, the entire AM broadcast band. And you can see I've got the other uh, few capacitors called out, and the uh, resistors as well to create the uh, bias network, the voltage divider for the uh, Class A design and that works pretty well and keeps the uh, power level uh, down under uh, 100 milliwatts on the input power as well even though I don't have that called out here. The uh, toroid coil I'm using for the inductor 21 turns uh, total tapped at uh, 4 turns uh, that seemed to work really well and give me the correct feedback for the oscillator to uh, work uh, without hesitation. I elected to use some 26 AWG magnet wire, uh, 28 would work as well. And uh, you can see I used a, a 5 by 7 uh, centimeter copper single sided breadboard here and a few other uh, parts and pieces. I added an LED and a single pole single throw switch as well. Again as I mentioned I'm modulating this just so I can play some old tunes. You can kind of maybe hear them in the background here playing on an AM radio. Um, I did that, but you could also use this as a great little piece of test equipment if you would like and uh, create a, a small tone or uh, just use it as a CW carrier and uh, transmit that just to uh, do some local troubleshooting on your uh, AM radio or others. You could, of course, change the inductance and the uh, capacitance here and uh, vary this to work out of band probably from about a half a megahertz up to about 30 megahertz or so. Uh, this circuit should be uh, rather stable. You can see the inductor here that I mentioned, the uh, toroid uh, coil with the uh, 28 AWG wire. 
and the, the few capacitors. Um, one thing I didn't mention here just a minute ago, uh, in this case I did add a, a resistor right here on the audio side and of course we're just using mono audio from uh, my device to drive this. This just creates a little bit of attenuation here. Um, so that uh, part number is uh, called out on the uh, schematic as well and the value. The two capacitors that I called out here uh, for tuning Again, you could bypass this completely and uh, just uh, tie this directly back into a, a full-blown uh, capacitor of your uh, choice, your value, uh, based on the inductor size. little filtering here of the DC uh, with the, uh, I think this was a 10, yep, a 10 microfarad uh, cap. I think in one of my other designs I'll show in just a minute, on the uh, FET design I used a 22 microfarad and uh, a 0.1. Uh, cap right here as well. Did add a little LED. I just have a tendency to leave things turned on so um, that uh, just gives me a visual reminder that the uh, circuit is uh, turned on. Simple uh, DC supply again my input and I'm using about a 7-8 foot piece of uh, wire here for my uh, antenna lead. So uh, that's it. The back side nothing uh, fancy and uh, you know, not my best job laying this thing out, but it just to uh, do something here within about 30 minutes or so after doing some breadboarding, I think it turned out well. Someone could uh, take this design, lay it out, create a nice uh, circuit board with a nice ground plane and really clean up the uh, sine wave. Uh, let's take a look here at the uh, sine wave on this one more time here on the uh, O-scope. And then uh, we'll move along. I want to show you the uh, one other design that I did. It's a, uh, based on a JFET design, single transistor design as well. has less output, but it's really, really stable as well. And a very simple design only uses one resistor. I think you'll find it interesting if you elect to build it. Here's the other uh, VFO that I wanted to share with you guys. Again, I did take time to uh, figure out how to modulate the uh, VFO and just use it as a little small portable uh, transmitter for uh, close proximity to an old AM radio. Yes, I'm using the uh, NTE 312 JFET. Simply one resistor here, R1, the purpose of that is just to set the uh, bias uh, correctly and take some of the uh, load to ground. In some other designs you'll see another diode uh, placed between the uh, gate and ground. I'm uh, not using that in this case. Um, another thing here too, the inductor itself, L1, is designed very, very close to my other design that I just shared. It's a tap. These are Hartley oscillators, so you can see it is a, a tap design. I'll pull that up in just a minute. Um, C1 is critical. It's a, a small, uh, I think it's around 3 to 10 picofarad uh, cap that I've got in there. And I think I got the best results around uh, maybe 3 to 7 picofarads to get a nice sine wave and not to overdrive the uh, oscillator and get a really clean uh, sine wave. I'll pull that up. You guys can see the sine wave here in the picture and picture I was able to get out of this. At around 1 volt, uh, plus or minus a bit. The uh, tuning for this, as I mentioned, C3 and C2 could be changed. And you could tune the entire broadcast band or change the inductance, of course, and uh, probably cover all the way up to 30 megahertz or above, maybe even, I think, as much as 100 megahertz or so if you use some uh, good MPO uh, capacitors and a nice supply uh, voltage here. This is how I'm getting my uh, audio input in from the device itself. Um, you can see here. Um, I'm driving here through uh, one capacitor, then I've got my uh, 1N914 diode here. And uh, that's allowing me to still tap in to the bottom side of the uh, inductor itself and also introduce my uh, audio input here so it seems to modulate uh, really well. You can hear that playing in the background. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward here. The design itself, just coming back across to one more capacitor here back to my little uh, six foot antenna or so I can use in close proximity to a, a receiver. Um, took some time here to measure this. The circuit draws about uh, just under uh, nine milliamps of current. 
and uh, gives it an input power of about uh, 76 uh, milliwatts, which is under the 100 milliwatt requirement for the uh, states. Audio input drive, right at a, uh, you know, a quarter of a volt to about a half a volt, depending where you're at in the band to get the correct uh, modulation on the output. Here's the uh, parts list that I just referenced, the uh, NTE-312 in-channel JFET uh, that I had on hand that I used. I had a couple MPF-102s, but I think I had cooked those in a previous uh, breadboarding exercise, so they were no good. They were shorted. And let's see, the uh, capacitors that I just mentioned, uh, they're called out here. One thing to note, too, on that C1, that 3 to 10 picofarad ceramic trimmer, you could make a gimmick uh, capacitor if you choose to do so at that low a value. I think I did that for my first build. It uh, worked out really well also. But you just adjust that to get the best, cleanest sine wave. And you can see I'm using a fixed capacitor for C2, that again being an 82 picofarad. And I've selected that to resonate, you know, plus or minus a little bit from 1 megahertz. A 12 to 60 picofarad ceramic uh, trimmer in parallel with that. Then the other parts are called out here as well. Let's look at the uh, unit here real quick. Video is starting to get long, but here's the uh, little small design that I did. You notice the other one I did on a single side board. Uh, this is on a double sided board. Single sided board introduces less uh, straight capacitance, so that's a better deal. And a true build of a, a true PCB board would be uh, would be best in this case. But uh, the simplistic design, the inductor that I mentioned just a little bit ago, the two trimmers. This is uh, C, uh, C1 here at this location and uh, C3 here. And I went on and put a little terminal uh, here where I could just tie in a uh, variable tuning condenser if I would elect to do so. Um, here you can see the uh, polystyrene um, capacitor that I have in place there, the 82 picofarad, just tied in to make it resonate again around 1 megahertz or so. And other than that, it's a, a very straightforward, simple um, design. You can see how small this thing is. I haven't taken time yet to uh, put it in an enclosure, but I plan on doing so. And uh, it'd be nice just to carry in your pocket or so if you're a radio meet, you know, and you want to play some oldies or something on a, a radio, you could uh, fire it up and do so within a few feet. So folks, I appreciate you uh, watching. As I mentioned, I'll post the uh, BOMs here, the parts list, in the uh, description of the video. And at the conclusion of the video, I'll leave uh, both schematics up so you can do uh, screen prints of those as well. Have fun. Hope to have another video posted uh, soon and pick out my uh, winter project since I'm a little behind schedule and uh, not sure what I want to get into. Maybe another Zenith. Well, time will tell, I suppose. Thanks again for watching. Happy 2019, folks.